This message is to uh, Dak Prescott. We looking for that motherfucking dog. And I don't think Jerry Jones will allow him to become that. Because you got to be politically correct. You got to be the, almost the president of football, almost, to be the signal caller for the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. What Dallas Cowboys need at that, at, at that quarterback position is somebody to say, no, nah, f*** that. <laughs> it's my shit. This is what we gonna do. I, I hear all that, but we're trying to win. We're trying to win, yes or no. Okay, cool. Now unleash me and let me win this football game. What are we talking about? You see what the problem with this conversation is? It's ignoring all the other issues on the Dallas Cowboys and making it seem like the only reason that they're not winning is because the quarterback isn't exhibiting that dog. He's not saying, nah, F that. And they all gonna do exactly what I say around here. Forget what y'all talking about. Y'all can do what I say. Dak Prescott has led one of the top offenses in the league anytime he's healthy. He's notoriously known as one of the most vocal quarterbacks at the line of scrimmage. The offense completely flipped the script last season after the 49ers game. Why? Because they started doing more of what a quarterback would probably want to do, which is throwing the ball down the field and not so many damn short slants and throwing behind the line of scrimmage. I think the quarterback probably had a little bit of input with that. I'm about to break down this whole dog conversation, but all I'm going to say is if you're one of the people that really bought into this, this rah-rah speech that Cam Newton was given and these backhanded comments that he was making about Dak Prescott, just then, then, then shame on you and buckle in because this is this is going to be an interesting video. I don't think Dak can be that. No, because Jerry wants to win his way. You see what I'm saying? So those are going to be very combative forces. See, this is the only problem that I've had with former players starting their own platforms is the fact that they start to get the rewrite history. Cam, how could you possibly call out Dak Prescott for not having that dog in him? Because if you say that y'all want to see that dog, that's insinuating that he doesn't have that dog currently or he's not showing that dog. How can you possibly critique someone for not showing that dog when you didn't show that dog in the biggest moment of your entire NFL and football career? when you didn't dive on a fumble in the Super Bowl. Cam Newton decides not to dive in there and yeah, take he backed away football. from it. How could you sit here and question someone's dog when we see this dude going around, inviting contact, taking contact on head first, even if it's not in his best interest sometimes because he get flipped like a pancake, He's still inviting that contact, and he's trying to impose his will on other players. And other guys know he a big dude. He'll run you over. They said it before. So I see that looking like he's finna run. I know that look in his eyes. I done seen it many times at Mississippi State. But what's the biggest thing was is the fact that I did not think he would try to jump over me. I really thought he was going to try to run me over because he can squat. He's a heavy squatter. I got up there and I see him like gathering his foot like he's finna be do a windmill 360 or something. I said, I know Dak ain't think he's finna clear me. Gotta hit him. Bam. And I'm kind of sad that my dog landed on his head because that could be concussion protocol. And I want my dog to be in concussion protocol, but... I talked to him. I said, Dak, man, what y'all jump on me for? He said, Slay, man, I gotta try to score. That's what type of guy you want on your team. You want a leader like that that's willing to risk his body to put his team in a winning position and, you know, at least try. How can you say that someone's not displaying that dog when they run for a first down similar to what you would have done and then they flex on him and letting them know, hey, I'm a big boy. You're gonna have to come with it to take me down. Big body. I'm a big body, I do that. Hey, I'm a big body. How can you say someone doesn't have that dog when we seen time after time again last season in the Miami Dolphin game, in the Detroit Lion game, the Philadelphia Eagles game? We seen time after time again this dude willing to put his body on the line to make the plays necessary to try and win a game. How can you say someone's not a dog? When his own teammates, new teammates, that have played with some of the most vicious dogs in NFL history, and Brandon Cooks playing with the Tom Brady. When one of these teammates is willing to say himself, he got that dog in him. He's one of the best leaders he's ever been around. When I tell you one of the best leaders I've been around, and that's saying a lot. You know Drew, you know what I mean? And and, and Tom obviously speaks for himself. But that boy can lead you into a pack of wolves. Like he, he got that dog in him, and and the fact that he keeps going. What I love about his story, you know, he loses his mom, loses his brother, and the fact that he can keep on going 
and a lot of this stuff don't you know don't don't bother him like that that's a dog right there how can you tell someone to show you that dog when the one time they did get kind of snippy and the one time they did step outside of that box and say i'm glad the fans threw stuff at the referees because they suck and he got killed on every network on every tv show he got killed credit to them then oh credit credit to them so you want him just to continue to invite that unnecessary attention when his job is already hard enough you see, this is my issue. This is my issue is for one, why is Cam Newton obsessed with attaching his name to a conversation surrounding Dak Prescott? You were a former player. You were someone that had issues with the media. You were someone that complained about how the media portrayed players and how the media may go about their business. But now you're contributing to the same exact cycle by continuing to have these dialogues surrounding Dak Prescott, which is fine. But what's not fine is, is when you start to project your own versions of reality or your own perceptions of what you think a dog actually is into the conversation. Because believe it or not, there's a lot of people that believe in the Mad Hatter. There's a lot of people that feel like Cam Newton's words carry a lot of weight. But as it pertains to this whole conversation surrounding Dak Prescott and Cam Newton constantly having to talk about Dak Prescott, comment when he loses, like he's never been attached to the Cowboys in this entire career. He wants to wait to after his post career when he's still, let's be honest, he still would want to play football right now. But he has to wait to after his post career to attach his name to this dude and want to have negative conversations, even if it's presented in a fashion to where it doesn't seem like he's the one being negative because he's trying to really throw the negativity of the conversation on the Cowboys. He's trying to throw it on the Joneses. He's trying to throw it on, oh, that can't show that he got that dog in him because he plays for the Cowboys. But he has shown that he has that dog in him. And you see, I actually agree with some of the points that Cam and Shannon Shrupp were making in this entire discussion because I just showed a clip of it, true enough. But the framing of the entire dialogue was just all the way wrong. Man, you can have a nice family picture hanging up in your house, but if that joint is crooked and it's throwing off the look of the entire feng shui of that wall over there, then it's wrong. You need to fix the framing. They need to fix the framing of this conversation because the prelude to talking about the Joneses and how they negatively impact winning shouldn't have been to talk about a quality that Dak Prescott doesn't have when he's displayed that very quality on several occasions and he displays it every day with the way he goes about his business as the quarterback of the Cowboys and showing a different type of strength. Like I will continue to say, the scariest dogs I have ever come across is someone who used to have to catch the bus and walk home from school all the time. The scariest dogs I've ever come across are the ones that don't do no barking. They just jump that fence and it's Pat and Turner from there, man. You gotta get the hell up out of there. The issue is, what is that dog that you're talking about, man? What is it that you're trying to see is my question. You're saying that Jerry's operation is too buttoned up. You almost have to be presidential to play for the Cowboys. Yeah, because you're representing one of the biggest brands in all of the country, in all of the world. So yes, if you're going to become the CEO of a Fortune 500 company, you're going to have to come with it a little bit more than you would if you were the CEO of a local mom and pop shop. So yes, he presents himself in a different fashion. And see, to me, therein lies the issue with this whole dialogue. A lot of people overlook the undertone of this entire conversation because the objective truth and the empirical data that you can actually seek out and look at with your own eyes actually exhibits the exact traits that people would associate with some players and why they are dogs, Dak Prescott has done the very same things. But see, this whole dialogue has undertones of the conversation of talking about someone's blackness, their level of blackness, and what does black look like? What does being black really look like? Because what exactly are we getting at here? Again, Dak Prescott has exhibited similar traits and similar mannerisms as other dudes that people look at as dogs. But he's not being looked at as a dog. Why? Because he wears nice tailored suits? Because he articulates himself in an educated and well-mannered fashion? Because he exudes class? Is that what we're discussing right now? Because that's kind of what this conversation seems like we're discussing when we apply the term presidential 
to the entire dialogue. You see what I'm saying here? I don't like these types of conversations because to me, it's putting people in a box when you're trying to tell someone there's only one way to skin a cat. When you can be a silent assassin, Hitman didn't do no talking. I don't like trying to dictate what something is supposed to look like. Because to be honest, and this is just me as a black man commenting on a conversation happening between two other black men, this conversation had undertones of discussing his blackness level. This offseason, if y'all haven't really been paying attention at any other time, this offseason more than any should just show y'all how much the Cowboys are really keeping the lights on and putting food on the table for a lot of these people from different platforms, no matter if it's a three or four letter network or a former NFL player that's trying to continue to grow his platform. The Cowboys and the players that play on the Cowboys are going to continue to feed homes for generations. And it's just vital that people have another option of what to believe. No one individual can dictate with any certain thing looks like and cam it's just interesting you say this because i guess you display that you had that dog in you right out of the nfl bro so while i agree with some of the points that you've made your methodology still reeks of jealousy either way we still the same old cowboys i'll see you guys on the next one calling me texting me paging me asking me am i still the ball y'all use the check on me listen 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 i'm still the boys Oh, shut up, my boy, shut up. Hey, I'm still them boys.